Hi, everyone. Welcome to our webinar. Thank you so much for joining this conversation um, with Shopko's high school graduates. We're really looking forward to a great um, discussion over the next hour. Um, my name is Molly Frank, and I am Shopko's development officer um, sitting in our New York office. Before I hand things over to these incredible students, I just want to give a little bit of background. As you all may be aware, Shopko opened the Kibera School for Girls in 2009, and the school and Shopko was and still is focused on providing uh, and committed to providing free high quality education, focusing on leadership development to girls in Kibera, as well as holistic support to the students and their families. And the students that we will hear from today were all part of the first class at the Kibera School for Girls. This, um, and today Shafko operates two primary schools serving over 630 students in Kibera and Mathare. Um, and KSG has graduated five classes of grade eight students. So since KSG opened its doors, Shafco has grown to um, the largest grassroots organization in Kenya's informal settlements, um, working to eradicate extreme poverty in the slums through strong community-led relationships and service delivery that includes healthcare, clean water, and economic empowerment programs. Um, today, Shafco has a presence in 34 communities across 14 counties in Kenya, impacting over 1.2 million people. Now I'm, I'm pleased to introduce Amy Hutchinson, Shafko's Director of Future Education, to provide a bit more background on our future education program and introduce these awesome students. Um, and before Amy jumps in, a quick housekeeping note, um, we'll have a period of Q&A at the end of the program. So please post any questions you have throughout in the chat or in the Q&A box um, as the girls are talking, if anything comes up and we'll get to as many questions as we can at the end. So Amy, take it away. Thanks, Molly. Um, so my name is Amy Hutchinson, and I am the Director of Future Education at Shafco. And I am really thrilled um, that everyone here today is going to have the opportunity to meet some of our students. I always feel that no matter how much I say about them, and those of you who know me, I say a lot about them, it's really not until you get the chance to meet them and interact with them that you can really see how amazing they are. So I know you're here to hear from them. So I'm just going to do a quick recap of our program so you know what they've just completed. So because Shafko does not have a brick and mortar secondary school, the future education program is run like a scholarship program. So after our students complete class eight at the Cabrera School for Girls, the vast majority of them transition to boarding schools here in Kenya, while a small minority attend high school at boarding schools in the U.S. on full scholarship. We have complete faith that they are receiving very strong academics at the respective schools. But one of the things we wanna make sure is still happening is that the students are continuing to build on their leadership and their social emotional abilities. These foundations were laid at KSG and in order for these girls to become the future change agents of Kenya, it's important that they're not only reinforced but expanded during high school, which is some of their most formative years. So in addition to the financial support they receive from high school or from Shafko to attend high school, the future education program works to build those social, emotional and leadership skills in five different ways. So the first is a training. <clears throat> so during every holiday break, the students have a three-day training where we cover everything from sexual reproductive health to servant leadership to friendships, values, and virtues. Um, we do have a base curriculum that we deliver, but we also pivot based on what we um, observe the girls are experiencing. The second component is an internship at one of Shafko's many programs, including future education. Um, so the girls have big dreams of entering the professional world, but unfortunately, exposure to offices isn't something that they're really exposed to coming from Kibera. So although Shafko Shafko is a unique work environment. Um, it still gives them the chance to experience life in an office while also seeing some of the different programs that Shafko has. My personal favorite thing that we do with the girls is a student-led community service project where the students themselves are given the opportunity to design a community service project. So we ask them, you know, if you could do anything for your community, what would you do and why? What impact would it have? Um, how would you lead your team? And then they actually create a budget to implement it and Shafko funds that program. So it's been really amazing to see the different programs the girls have designed and done from working at elderly homes 
to um, visiting centers with street children or counseling teen, teen mothers. And the hope is that if we're able to ingrain in them at a young age, the importance of giving back once they're in the working world and on their own, it'll just be second nature to them and it will, will come easily. We also continue our mentorship program, which starts when they're in KSG. And the last thing that we do is um, leadership retreats. So when, during their first year of high school, um, we take them uh, for an overnight retreat and we talk about the roses and thorns of that transition. And it also gives us an opportunity to reconnect as a family. And then after their high school graduation, we're actually preparing to go next week for our first retreat um, where we're going to talk about the journey that they just completed, but also the next steps ahead. So the four girls who are here today are young ladies, have successfully completed high school and participated in all aspects of the future education program. And I and the entire future education team and really all of Shafko could not be more proud of these young women. Um, and I really can't wait to see what's next. So I'm excited to give them a chance to chat with you and share a bit about their journey. Um, so with that, I am going to introduce our first student. So Joyce, Joyce is a graduate of the Loomis Chafee School in Connecticut. Um, during her time at Loomis, Joyce discovered her passion for singing and participated in both the school choir and the acapella group. She was extremely proactive when it came to seeking out leadership opportunities at school. She was chosen to be one of 12 students in a selective leadership program uh, where she lived in her do a dorm her sophomore year. After her junior year, she was awarded the Norton Fellowship from her school and given a grant to design and implement a community service project back here in Cabrera. And then during her senior year, she had the opportunity to participate in Loomis's very unique iTry program where she worked with other seniors to help local businesses solve problems. She is now headed to Susquehanna University in Pennsylvania, and I cannot wait to see what she does, does there. So, Joyce. Hi, um, as Amy mentioned, I'm Joyce, and um, I went to Loomis Chafee School in Windsor, Connecticut. Um, so, starting off with my show for journey. Um, Shofko has been, KSG has been not only a help or um, a support to me, but also to my um, entire family because it has exposed me to um, different opportunities and um, exposed me to meeting different people who um, through them I've gotten to like have, um, you know, different opportunities to go to places I had, I would never have dreamt of ever going or visiting. And um, <clears throat> I was lucky to be among um, st the students who um, got a full scholarship in eighth grade to go study um, my high school in, uh, U in the US. And um, going to Loomis Chafee or going to America was, it was fun, but it also like had its own challenges like um, I was homesick for like the first few weeks because I had never been away from home for a long time and this time like I was away like very far away for almost a year and um, it was hard for me not being around my family and friends back in Kenya but um, through um, KSG and Loomis Chafee, I got to meet people with different cultural backgrounds and make new friends. In Loomis Chafee, I played field hockey since freshman year to um, senior year, which the very beginning, like it wasn't very easy because I'm not, I'm not a sporty person. So choosing, I don't know, I don't even know why I chose field hockey, but it turned out great. and. Um, you know, having teammates to um, walk to back to the dorms with, that, that was fun and it made me um, become closer to a lot of people. <clears throat> also, as Amy mentioned, I did um, different um, activities at Loomis, but the main one I'm going to focus on is um, the Norton Fellowship Project, where I was um, 
chosen and Lumis funded a project um, for me to come back home and help my community. So for my project over um, the summer, last summer, I went to four different schools in Kibera, where for one full week in each school, my friends and I um, taught and engaged with six to eight graders on topics affecting teenagers in the slums, which included um, effective communication, healthy relationships, mental health, drugs and substance abuse, and um, sex and human development. Um, these are some subjects that don't come up in conversations or um, people aren't comfortable talking about. So it felt good um, sharing what I've learned from my experience in the States with um, my peers back home and generally getting the students to open up and have interactive sessions. Um, at the end of this, um, I mean, at the end of each week, we gave um, each student punches or boxes for boys, notebooks, pens, soap, because it was um, during COVID, um, a curriculum that consisted of everything we talked about um, <clears throat> the whole week and um, food to end the event on a high note. Um, the highlight of this project was that although we'd originally budgeted for 100 students in each school, we ended up working with over um, 170 students, which was very exciting because it just showed how eager these kids were, um, eager how these kids were eager to learn. And um, some of the schools even went ahead and started a club where they would meet um, twice a month or once a month to remind themselves of what they'd learned and invite others who hadn't gotten the opportunity to join um, this project. And um, next, I mean this fall, next fall, this fall, I'm happy to be joining Susquehanna University and I'm not sure what I'm going to be measuring in yet, but I'm excited to, um, you know, be able to explore different fields and see where the school or life takes me. Yeah. Thank you, Joyce. And now everyone knows why I say it's best to hear from you girls. Um, so next up, we have Velma. So Velma is a graduate of Bahati Girls here in Kenya. She was an extremely engaged member of her school where she played both basketball and soccer for four years. Um, she was chosen to serve as the geography representative where she assisted her teacher in delivering the class material and helped students with their revision. She always sought opportunities outside of the classroom um, when she was home over the breaks. She participated in the Africa Code Challenge and designed a game to help children with their math schools skills, excuse me. It was also while she was home that she discovered her passion for empowering girls with sexual reproductive health knowledge, um, but I'll let her tell you a bit more about that. And she is set to transition to Jomo Kenyatta University of Agriculture and Technology, where she'll receive a degree in project planning and management. So over to you, Velma. Okay, hi everyone. As anything, I'm Velma. I'm going to talk about my personal journey as a Shopko uh, scholar. Personally, Shopko as an organization has been a family for me and a place that I can call home. They have catered for my school fees since I was in primary school, so me through my secondary education, and is still here to support me transition to the university. I am very excited that I'm going to be doing university because honestly speaking, I'm the only one in my entire family, including my extended family, who is going to be the first to go to university. And this is such an achievement for not only myself, but also for my entire family too. All I want is now is to work hard at the university and become successful in the future. My most memorable moment as a teacher education team uh, back in Shopko is when they gave me a chance to participate in an essay contest. They do the right thing uh, essay. I was lucky to win, and from the prize I got, I was able to carry out a community service of empowering the youth around my community on sexual reproductive health. About the, uh, the project I did, I mobilized uh, youth around my community, mostly the class, and uh, together we carried out a round discussion on sexual reproductive health, where I taught them on hygiene and how to like, um, 
understand themselves better in their state as adolescent children growing up in terms of feedback. So through these discussions, we, uh, they were able to like learn more about themselves and understand how they uh, they can work hard and work smart and become more successful having grown from the slum. Also, um, my most memorable moment um, is when I got a chance to participate in an African challenge where I designed a game that will help children with their mathematics. Yeah, so these are some of the uh, moments I loved uh, back here at the Future Education Team in short form. Uh, my most uh, challenging uh, experiences I faced at my school was when most students and teachers from school would judge you because you come from the slum. They, um, you'd find most of them will start asking you questions like, how do you survive at home? How do you live? Where do you get food? They have this picture of you like, you know, like you have no ability to like succeed in future. So the most important thing I learned from this experience is that we should learn to stand for ourselves and work hard and smart because the only way we, uh, to prove that we are better than them is to do and to perform better than they can do. Yeah, so if I may talk about my experience uh, in high school studying in Kenya, I'm, I, I will say it's not a very, uh, it's a tough experience studying uh, in Kenya. So you find sometimes back in high school, I used to like wake up at three to go like book a bathroom where you're supposed to shower because you are very many students. So if you come uh, last, you find that like, everyone is uh, as you say, you know, the bathroom, so you'll be late for your classes. So you have to wake up early go shower and then go for your morning test by 3.30. Then our classes started, uh, the test came in class uh, from seven. And I would say there are no breaks like in between lessons because you find they leave a lot to work and you have to finish all the work before they come into the next lesson. And the classes end late by five. Yeah, the classes end, then you have to do other activities like go to the field. I personally was taking part in basketball. I was the basketball captain. So yeah, at 5.30, I was in the field uh, playing games with my friends. Then you have to go back to class again for your evening trip, uh, evening trips, which was also uh, not easy. So yeah, high school uh, back in Kenya was not that easy. You have to like, uh, always be on time because uh, teachers won't wait for you. So you have to like, uh, be self-driven. But the most important thing, um, I'm very happy that I got to overcome all these challenges. And now I'm very happy that I'm going to be joining university, one of the best universities in Kenya, where I'm going to be taking project planning and management. And uh, I just want to like uh, study hard at the university and get to um, help my family back at home. And also other kids in the, uh, in the who come from Islam like me. Thank you, Velma. It's beautiful. So next up, we have Martha. So Martha graduated from Buffalo Seminary School in Buffalo, New York. From the moment she stepped on campus, she lit up the community and was like a magnet. In her freshman year, she received the Friendship Award given to the freshman who, in the opinion of her classmates, best brought the class together through her warmth and friendliness. She also thrived in the classroom and was on honor roll every single semester while in high school. She was a dorm prefect her junior and senior year, and during her senior year, she was elected by the student body, staff, and faculty to serve as the Hornet Jacket President, which is one of five all-school roles. She is off to Amherst College in the fall. So over to Martha. Hi. Hello, everyone. Um, as Amy said, my name is Martha Chien. And before I start, if anyone who's out of country um, is wondering why we have you know, hoodies and hats and, and beanies on, um, it's freezing here. Um, so don't be surprised. Um, so my name is Martha. Um, I went to Kibera School for Girls in Shoko um, and was uh, glad and very um, happy to attend Buffalo Seminary in Buffalo, New York. Um, speaking of my Shofko, um, my personal journey with Shofko. So one of um, you know, the biggest stories I tell when I talk about Shofko and you know, my journey with Shofko is the idea of being a girl from the slums and getting educated. Um, it's not um, a given for you, not alone um, you know, being a girl, but being educated when you're from the slums because um, 
first of all, people in the slums are, you know, we, we, are, we don't necessarily um, have, you know, the ability to fully support, um, you know, ourselves, the education, the um, health and all that. So I was very lucky to be um, the girl, chosen girl in the family um, of three girls to um, come and, you know, learn in Shofko. Um, and Shofko to me has been like a family, um, uh, you know, a place where, um, you know, I come and uh, meet amazing people and meet amazing friends. You know, my best friends come um, are from Shofko. I mean, except from the ones who aren't from Shofko, obviously. Um, and coming to Shofko was not only hope for me, but was hope for my family and my community as well. Kibera is a very um, connected community everybody knows everybody someone will call your name and they'll be like how does that person know me but um we are very connected um so for me being in Shofko is is hope for my family and it's hope for you know my family who aren't family by blood my community um so being in Shofko um enabled me to have an experience outside of the world by that I mean um you know literally an experience outside of this country um whereby um one of my favorite uh, memories or moments was um, the summer program. This was whereby um, we had two months of fun and games. I love fun. I mean, academics, I love gay, but fun is fun. Um, two months of fun where our partner, Shof Coast Fraternity School in the US Chapin had um, students come over here and we were very young and, um, you know, we played games and um, they taught us games that uh, you know they have in the US that was where before we had you know any connection with um, anyone who you know was wasn't black um, by the time so they are the first you know non-black people we got to meet with and interact with and they taught us songs very fun songs my favorite thing Yankee Doodle <laughs> um, <laughs> we still sing those songs um, to date um, amazing memories I love memories um, and Shofko, through Shofko, I got to meet very um, inspire, inspiring people, very influential people who, without Shofko, I wouldn't have, have had the chance to meet. Um, my other favorite um, thing about Shofko that I got to experience was the mentorship program where um, each girl was given a person from fifth grade who got to, um, you know, encourage you and talk to you about my mentor. I feel like I can't talk about them as mentors because they became more family than mentors. They became people who like, they were there to encourage us and to um, tell us that it's okay to be from the slums and um, have big dreams. And um, it wasn't only mentors, it was also our Shofko team, our teachers, um, Shofko founders themselves, Ken and Jess, um, the people who worked here, um, you know, as I said, Shofko was a whole big family and everyone was voting and is rooting for everyone. Um, my best of all um, experiences and opportunities was when um, I got the opportunity to study in the US. I remember us being told that, you know, that was something that was going to happen. We're the first um, cohorts of people to um, go to the US and, you know, being given the news of, oh, you're going to the US. You, first of all, it sounds fake and it sounds very unreal and like, um yeah right you yeah obviously um but then you know i still didn't believe that until i went to the u.s one year in two years in three years in and four years in i still stand and i'm like in the u.s okay yeah that's happening um but yes i was very um happy and very blessed and um you know as the name says itself shining hope of communities you know the hopeful part of it um being able to go to a country where Many people want to go to, especially people here in a country where I, you know, just traveling outside of Kenya um, was a big opportunity itself. So um, my journey in Buffalo Seminary, um, my favorite part about going to Buffalo Seminary, among my other favorite things, was before I joined and I, um, you know, we had this few um, uh, weeks of meeting people before we joined school. And when I told everyone I was going to Buffalo Seminary, everyone was like, are you ready for the call? And this question was asked by everyone to the point I was like, how bad is this call? Like, should I be worried? Um, yes, it's bad, but it's bad in the best way. You know, it's amazing when you're 
inside and you're taking hot cocoa and the snow looks so beautiful. And then you go outside and you get first bites and then it gets ugly from there. Uh, but that's one of the favorite um, memories. But um, being in Buffalo Seminary has given me my other life's best moments. But as Joyce said before, it came with its challenges being in the US in general, um, which I'll talk about a few of them. Some were like um, different, being in a different world came with different beliefs and you know different like way of things and just different people around you and with this came the fear of um, expression the fear of um, not fitting in and not being accepted and you know most of the times um, it, it took me uh, a while to be able to um, fully communicate with people and fully engage in classes um, I love 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 happiness discussions but before um, I was able to open up and before I was able to, you know, take in the difference that I had with other people, um, I used to be, you know, very quiet in happiness discussions. I used to have really amazing points. I personally love discussing about anything. I will talk about anything with you right now and make it a full discussion. Um, but I used to have like, you know, things I had to say and I wanted to say and I wanted to be hard, but um, I, you know, the fear of being like, oh, no one is going to get what I'm saying because my accent itself was a barrier. And so I had the fear of not, you know, people not understanding what I'm saying because I, okay, I have many stories about my accent being a barrier. Um, among them was one time I was driving in my friend's parents' car with my friend and um, they said something and I asked them what they said about five times. And I feel like I got to a point where I felt guilty for asking them what. And I just, um, you know, you know, when you give an answer that doesn't necessarily say yes or no, but it's both yes and no. I feel like I became a master at doing that, um, mainly because I couldn't get people for the longest time. And I'm sure a lot of people did not understand me for the longest time. But um, it took a lot of, you know, believing in myself and it took a lot of self acceptance um, for me to be like, okay. It is what it is. We are going to take it slow. We'll try to enunciate everything. We'll try to, we'll do whatever it takes for, um, you know, for me to be hard. And if I have to ask people what they're saying like 10 times, I will, you know, communication is key. We will get there. Um, another problem was homesickness. Uh, to me, it was like, oh, I'm not going to be homesick because, you know, um, that wasn't something in my um, dictionary at all. Um, but then, you get there and you really want to be home. You really want the food. You want the people. As long as you have amazing people around you, you know, there's nothing great like home. Um, so yes, um, homesickness was the other problem. But I feel like I got to overcome that with the connections I made in school. For me, my biggest asset in school was um, my social socializing abilities. Praise to me. Uh, but um, I got to meet very, you know, amazing people, amazing friends. Um, I got to connect with people outside of um, US, people in US. I got to see their cultures, to experience it, um, to eat, you know, the foods from these different cultures and, um, you know, Asian food, uh, Bahamian food, uh, food all around the world, American food, obviously. Um, talking of American food, um, I will just say New York pizza is the best. Um, in crust pizza, everyone. If you don't like that, I don't know what to say. Um, but yes, uh, that was one of my favorite parts, the connecting with people. I feel like that was what I was looking for personally, because I feel like to me, connections is what matters. Um, it's, you know, it's the connection um, you have with people, the connection you, um, you make with people. Um, and I think it's through Buffalo Seminary that I got to discover what I want, um, you know, to travel around the world and you know, learn languages and eat the different foods around the different worlds. Um, but then the biggest lesson I learned in the US was um, attitude is everything. You know, you have a positive attitude towards everything. I learned this through soccer. I was playing soccer, but I was awful at it. Um, it was my first time playing soccer in four years. No, in, I mean, since I was born, I played it for four years. Um, and I was, I was awful, I was so bad at soccer. But then um, I call my I used to call myself the team cheerleader. We didn't have cheerleaders because for me it was all it was all about um, being very hyped on the sidelines. Even though I was sideblind most of the time, especially in the freshman year, 
I was still the cheerleader. I'm still the non-cheerleader till senior year. I got better though. No worries. I got good at defense. So um, uh, next is my next level of education, which I'm very happy to be you know, talking about. Um, I'm very happy to be joining Amherst, Amherst College this fall. Um, uh, it's not only an amazing chance because Amherst is one of the best schools in the US, as I've been told and I've, been, I've had a hundred times and I've looked up to make sure a thousand times. Um, Amherst also came with an amazing financial aid offer, which I am very happy to have gotten that because, you know, no financial worries means focus on your academics and means good things for me. Um, I'm looking forward to the good campus. I, it looks beautiful. I haven't visited, but I've Googled. It's beautiful. I mean, that's according to my Google, I guess. And the color purple is my favorite color. So obviously, an amazing place. Um, but I also look forward to, um, you know, uh, studying. I don't know the specifics of what I'll be studying, but I look forward to diplomacy, anything to do with diplomacy and languages. I love, love, love languages. I took a thousand of them in high school. Okay, that's an exaggeration. I took Spanish for four years and my fourth year, I um, took both Spanish and Mandarin, just and um, trying to self-teach myself Korean and um, French. And we'll see where that gets me. Uh, but I love languages and I hope to do something along the lines of languages. Um, for me, my final goal is to give back, um, you know, to my community and to give back to those uh, who were like me by my situation, um, you know, of not having hopes, being in the slums, a place where there isn't much to look forward to. And I think Amherst is going to be the best place to do that. And um, with people I have from, you know, Shofko to Buffalo Seminary to the people I hope to meet in Amherst. Uh, you know, I look forward to where those connections and those people and those friendships are going to take me. And yes. Thank you, Martha. So I think everyone knows now what I meant when I said you lit up campus and why you got the French board. So I am so excited uh, now to hand it over to Herenia as our last student speaker. So Herenia is a graduate of Strehe Girls School, where she placed in the top. 3% uh, in the nation um, on her final national exam at the end of high school. She was an extremely active member of the Stray Hay community uh, where she served as the Scouts Patrol leader, the Tax Club Chief Secretary, Dance Crew Director, Basketball Captain, and when she was on school, she didn't miss a beat. Sorry, when she was on break, she didn't miss, miss a beat. She always looked for as many additional opportunities as she could, um, both to give back to the community and to grow herself. She placed in the top five in the Pan-African Africa Can Code Challenge. And she's a three-time Metis Collective speaker um, where she attended various conferences and spoke on topics related to education. My favorite of which was when she detailed how the special ingredient to education is love. Um, since graduating from high school, she's been volunteering at local libraries, helping students with the revision and also at the Street Smart Initiative. But I will let her tell you more about that. Um, she was called to study international relations at the University of Nairobi, but she's currently working, working towards admissions at the University of Hartford for fall 2023. So Herenia, over to you. Thank you so much, Amy. Uh, just uh, to say this again, my name is Herenia Otedo and yeah, I'm happy to, you know, be a panelist today. So I joined Shofu in 2009. Uh, for me, it was more like a life breakthrough for my family. Apparently by then I was the only, let me say, family member who had earned a scholarship uh, to study for free in the community. By then I think uh, the ratio between ch uh, children who are going to school and who are not going to school was one to 10. In that from every neighborhood perhaps could only get one kid who was going to school and the rest of the nine who are going to school. Um, throughout my whole journey, I really enjoyed and felt the impact of the chef teachers in my life. In that the way they molded me, the way you know they removed the villagehood from my life the way they um, impacted and exposed me to you know, what life is beyond Kibera. For me, I felt like if I wasn't exposed to what life is beyond Kibera, beyond Nairobi, perhaps my mind could have been fixed up and perhaps my goals would have been shoe-based in that 
I could only have goals on what I really want. My family wasn't really doing so well by then. Apparently, uh, the strains in the family were so were really coming out so fast. And for me, it felt like I was a chosen star. I was able to work hard in my uh, last year of primary school, and I earned a full scholarship in the best national school in the country, that is the Regal Center. My journey in the Regal Center, um, let me say, was not really like a high school, a high school experience for me. For me, it felt like you know a life packaging experience where you come here for four years, you know, we teach you the lessons, we mold you, we want to show you what life is, the diversity that comes to different people from different backgrounds, different lessons. And that is the one thing I think I really took out from my from high school, that above it all, we're all different. One of my greatest challenges in high school was always standing out. Coming from Shofko, I feel like I was I was really prepared. And the challenges I had been facing in my life really made me not to take my life as an experiment. In that most teenagers like really try experiment, you know, experimenting steps to see what will happen or not. But for me, it was different. I really couldn't experiment anything because I knew that for me to break the chains in my family, I had to be different and stand out. And going in high school really made me, the, my first day in high school and even as time pro progressed by, I really stood out. And that is how I was able to grab opportunities. I got into so many leadership opportunities in the school. And sometimes I felt like this is like a burden to me. But later on, I came to discover that this was only trying to show me that I am my own limit. I can handle every leadership position I had. And I still was able to work hard and get an amazing grade. Uh, for my uh, fourth year in high school. After my high school, <clears throat> I was so proud, you know, to now come back to my community. I really wondered what kind of change I would do. And I noticed that when I was growing up, I really wanted somebody to push me, somebody to show me the right way, somebody to uplift me, somebody, you know, to help me do that maths, to help me do that science. And that is one thing I felt I would do to my fellow community members. And I consider the labor and self space. For me, going there, mentoring those kids, you know, doing, helping them do their assignments, make the study plans, find solutions to problems they feel they're facing in school has been my greatest joy. This has been my fourth month. Every day when I even miss a day at the library, I'm like, what if I would have touched another life today? And it has really helped me in that I'm able to see most young adults make right decisions, think wisely, and even focus on themselves. One of the, my lifetime challenges has always been the one standing out and being different. For me, I feel like it comes with a lot of resistance and rebellion because not really everyone at the age of 16, 17, 18 has really purposed on what they really want to do. Uh, but for me, being that really brought a lot of rebellion. And because I really wanted to practice a lot of leadership, servanthood, I had to learn how to cope up with that. And that really helped me. My most memorable experiences are follows. The first one was my scholarship grant. It was like a breakthrough for me. It was a star. It was a whole life package for me. The second one was my graduation. It just happened last week, Friday. Apart from having the graduation feeling, I felt like it's an achievement. It's like a club. Like, Heronia, you are doing great. You, you know, you are here in 2009, but now see where you are. You are like 10 steps ahead. And the only picture was in my mind is, how will I see myself when I'm 25? And it gave me a purpose to work hard and a purpose to dream, to wake up each and every day earlier on, and, you know, to keep on working hard. The second one is my everyday experience at the Shofko office. That office for me feels like heaven on earth. It really, really helps me, you know, jiggle my mind out in any circumstance I'm into. The ladies at that office are so welcoming. I mean, I come in that office in the morning with so many troubles. Monica, this is not working. Amy, I want this, I want this. And at the end of the day, they really help me figure it out in that for me to even stay away from Shofko, I always feel like somebody's trying to break the bond between me and Shofko. And that is, I think, one memorable experience I have each and every day, always going to the Shofko office. The next one is the Kensal Scholarship. 
that I'm uh, up into, which will uh, definitely uh, progress with University of Hartford. It's my dream to uh, join an international university, such as University of Hartford, which will be able to offer great opportunities, internships, community services, leadership. I'm really not, let me say, I really, I can't say that I don't know what I really want to do, because of, of course I have said I just really don't experiment on what I really want to do. I want to either go to the health sector or the lower sector. The health sector in that I'm really passionate about making lives better. And I feel like it starts with health. However much you have everything on this world, I feel like if you have bad health, there's nothing you can do. The second one is low. Uh, being born from a very humble background, I've seen how the you know discrimination comes about, how being poor really brings you down. The, um, the challenges you face, you know, which really makes me strong and really, which really gives me a reason to work hard, harder. Because the, at the end of the day, I feel like it's upon me to make myself better. Uh, what I really look forward to is grabbing as many opportunities as I can. And my lifetime goal is to leave a legacy of change and hope. A legacy of change in that one day Kibera will have tall buildings, will have green lights, will have good schools will have plenty of materials, food, that one day will be a hunger-free area, one day Kibera will be a nice, healthy place. The other legacy I want to leave is a legacy of hope, in that I want my life to be a hope to others, that even one day if I'll be able to write a book, I will really show them that indeed you can move from a dark tunnel and source the light from outside. I wish to stretch my wings, because I know the potential I bear in me is way, way unlimited. And I really wish that the world one day will stand still and hear me speak and perform what I really want to do, change a life and you know, make a legacy. Thank you. Thanks, Rania. Um, so thanks to all the girls for sharing this story. I'm pretty sure that now everyone understands why I say it never really hits home until they hear from you. Um, and also why I hate speaking after you. So thank you, Karenia, for making me speak after you. Um, it's impossible to do. But what I do want to do real quickly is talk briefly about Shaco's role moving forward and our university approach. Um, so as you guys can see, these young women who joined Shaco in 2009 as our very first kindergarten class have truly grown into amazing people who have worked extremely hard to earn entrance into a university um, education. We all believe that with a university education, there's nothing that can stop them um, and that they will ultimately be whatever they want to be in this world and change their community. Um, but unfortunately, the reality is that for many low income, high achieving low income students, even a full scholarship isn't sufficient to join university um, because there are so many costs outside of the room board and tuition. So Shafko has already invested in these girls since they were in kindergarten and we plan to continue to stand by them um, as they take this next step in the journey. So from a financial perspective, for our students studying in Kenya, Shafko will be covering their first semester fees as we help them apply for a federal loan, which will enable them to pay for the remaining terms. Um, we're also ensure that they have laptops because we know that that's essential to university students, but also just the working world as the world is today. Um, and in addition, about 60% of our students will continue on with our partner EFAC, which stands for Education for All Children, um, and they will be given additional um, support through them. From a social emotional perspective, our students studying in Kenya will complete a gap year program. So there's a large chunk of time from when the students graduate high school to when they start university. And we wanna make sure we utilize that time to make sure we have a smooth transition. So during this gap year program, they will be completing a course on computer literacy, um, participating in a sustainable livelihoods and financial literacy training session, um, participating in mental health training, um, we have also organized peer-to-peer -peer mentorship sessions with older university students. Um, and then they will be designing a final community service project that, that they will be delivering as a class. Um, we're also spending time during the GAP program 
applying to various scholarship programs across the globe. So Shofko has had pointed conversations with uh, USIU, United States University um, in Africa, in, um, in Nairobi, African Leadership University in Rwanda, Ashashi University in Ghana, and we continue to build our partnerships globally. Um, we really want to get the world out, the word out about our amazing students, and we're confident that the more schools that learn about them and get to meet them like you have, the more opportunities they will have to transition to some of these top global universities. So for the students who succeed in that and, and do uh, secure full scholarships to attend university outside of uh, Kenya, Shafko is prepared to support them as well. So this comes in the way of a one-time grant to ensure the student is able to get to campus with everything they need. So from passports to visas, immunizations, flights, we, the grant does not have to be repaid. We just wanna make sure we can get them to campus and get them on, on, a, on a clean slate. Once the students reach campus, they are expected to use their work study opportunities to fund their livelihoods. This is something that all of our partner institutions are aware of. Um, however, even with this, there can sometimes be large costs that the students are unable to cover. So an example might be a flight home or books, which can be as much as $500 a semester. So in order to cover this, Shofco has developed a revolving, a revolving loan fund. So we know that as an international student, you don't have access to federal loans. So Shofco is stepping in to fill this role. Students will have the ability to apply twice annually for this loan. It's 0% interest. It's repayable starting one year after graduation for five years. And there's an element of loan forgiveness for students who return to Africa or students who go to work at an NGO. So our hope is that we're enabling them to complete university education at the schools that they work so hard to gain admissions to while also teaching them financial responsibility. Um, so at this time, I'm going to hand it over to Molly, and I think we're going to open the floor for questions, but I just really want to thank everyone for taking the time to jo join and learn more about the future education program and hear from our students. Um, I know that while there is a lot of glamour and awesome special treatment that comes from being a member of the first graduating class, there's also a lot of pressure. Um, all the other students look up to these girls and they are truly paving the way for hundreds of girls in their community. Um, and I honestly can't think of a better group of girls to, to play this role. So a big thank you to the students and what as well. Um, and back over to you, Molly. Thank you so much, Amy. And thank you ladies all for sharing your experiences. Um, we have some great questions that have come in through the um, Q&A and through the chat. And we're gonna try and touch on as many as we can in the next 10 minutes. Um, and feel free to post um, any more questions that you may have. And if we don't touch on them now, we can definitely follow up with them with you via email. Um, so I've got a great question I wanna start off with to each of you. Um, what is one piece of advice that you would give us to overcome the fear of being accepted? as this is something that you know everybody deals with all the time. So what's the one thing that you would say to help overcome that fear? Uh, Joyce, do you wanna kick us off or we can just go around the room? Uh, sure. Um, something that um, I was told my freshman year, cause like, you know, being a student in a, being, uh, international student in a foreign um, country like must have been like you know really challenging so something a friend of mine once told me is that there is like you will never find another choice so like you know there's no need for you to like start acting like somebody else or impersonate somebody else or um, come up with you know um, new I don't know just be somebody else so instead like just be yourself and if if you are meant to be friends or if you are meant to be there then the people are gonna love you for who you are and for what you bring to the table yeah amazing does anyone else want to add a piece of advice uh, yeah sure um for me for 
the um, according to me, an answer I would give you is sourcing for who you are. Um, I also, let me say, two years ago, I suffered the, uh, the fear of being accepted. But once I channeled myself to understanding my real identity of who is Herenia, I was able to, you know, give answers to who that is. And by that, you uh, adapt a personality of be you and do you. And in that, even if you, you, you respond to, you know, the acceptance that you really want, there will always be somebody who will still judge you and will still make you feel like you really also want to be accepted. In that, even if you do whatever people want you to do, they'll still talk at the end of the day, whether you change it or not. So I feel like one way to just solve the fear of being accepted is just asking yourself, who am I? And that will really, really cut deep and help you out, yeah. Awesome, thank you, Verena. Does anyone else have anything to add or let's move on to, or we can move on to another question. Um, I can add something. Um, for me, I feel like it's as simple as if the world was able to move from Stone Age to the world of technology and adapted to that, why can't it adapt to you, you know? So like, let the world around you adapt to you, let people around you adapt to you. And it's always, it's, it's a very easy like fix, a very easy answer. Every, you know, the people who are there for you, the people who are truly there for you are always going to be there for you, you know? The people who are there for, you know, other reasons, they will obviously leave when you want to be you, when you want to shine, when you want to, you know, be who you want to be. And even though that can sometimes be a challenge and a problem, it's always a blessing in disguise because the true ones are always going to be there they're always going to love you. They're always going to, to be there for who you know you want to be, for what you want to do. So, yeah. Thank you so much, Martha. Um, I have another great question here. Um, what are some of the biggest concerns that you have, or you know, what are some of the things you're worried about as you start college? And how do you think that you are gonna be able to overcome those, those fears and challenges? Um, I'd say one of my biggest fear is the fact that this is a new step for me in life. Like, I know nothing about um, doing college. So I, uh, I kind of feel like, what kind of people am I going to meet? What kind of people am I going to like start talking to? How are they going to like receive me there? So one thing that uh, really um, makes me think a lot is how are people going to relate to me once I get to doing college? But uh, one thing I'm going to do about this is that I want to like create more friends, like um, be open-minded. Like once I join college, I want to get a chance to like meet different people, get uh, people who I can uh, maybe start a friend group, a friend group here where we can talk and just uh, get um, get to know about uh, the college and just be myself. Yeah. Thank you, Velma. Does anyone else want to share? Uh, I feel like for me, one of the biggest challenges is, you know, like Velma said, going to a different level of education and um, one that you haven't had in your life, you know, ever. And, you know, trying to not necessarily fit in, but fit in with the community, with that type of, you know, the level of education. Um, and also, I feel like, going to um for me <laughs> um a co-ed school um the problem isn't necessarily going to the co-ed school because i haven't studied with boys before it's just you know the mentality of um you know the idea of not being exposed to an environment where you know i have had you know co-ed learning because i went to short school with all girls buffalo seminary was also all girls so um you know trying to make that shift for me um, you know, I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to disappointing some boys and, you know, with the mentality of being smart and all. Um, but yeah, I think that's something I'm, you know, kind of, well, I don't think it's a problem, you know, now that I've said it loudly, you know, they should be afraid for their lives. Um, no, but honestly, um, uh, also uh, another problem is um, 
being in the US again. I feel like when I come back to Kenya, um, I, I am like fully like dressed in the Kenyan mindset and the Kenyan feel and it's like home. And then you're like, oh, I have college. It's, it's another four years of, you know, being away from home for, you know, a long time. And, you know, just thinking about that itself um, is a little bit scary, but, you know, if I was able to do four years of high school, four years of college, it's possible, you know, it's the goal at long last. So, um, Thank you, Martha. Um, Harenia, it looks like we have a question that's just for you. Uh, they're curious about your um, decision to, to go to a university in the US or in Kenya, um, and wondering about what you see as the sort of pros and cons of each uh, option. So I uh, actually had even like gone through that uh, when I was told about the opportunity to study at Hartford. And when I analyzed about studying in Kenya and specifically University of Nairobi and studying at Hartford, at first, let me say it was really hard to make the decision, but of course I had to narrow down to what I really wanted. So to start with the Kenya and our school, it is a great school because it is termed as the best school in the country. Uh, the positive part about studying in that school is, I think the legacy of the name basically. When I did my university tour and I visited the school, I feel like the pride that comes to the school and the, and the name, the effect of the name in the job markets in the country is just there because of the past success of the school. But when I get back to like almost eight years ago, it is so hard to, you know, see what has really like come out from the school, like, uh, let me say a voluminous impact from the school because of the so many strats that have been ongoing. Uh, let me say lecturers not really turning up to classes. Yeah, it happens to all universities, but that is one challenge that I've seen in so many universities in the country in that people and schools allow strikes to be a hindrance to education. And I feel like that shouldn't be there. That is, I feel like that is just a, a mean way of stopping education. And that truly, really, let me say, objected my interest at the school. The other opportunity about studying University of Nairobi is, let me say, getting quick internships to, let me say, job markets and, yeah, and even like, you know, being attached to particular places you want to, to link up within the country. When I check on the University of Hartford, I think the first thing that really attracted me was, despite the full 100% scholarship, was the impact, how they really want their students to feel, to feel impacted in their society, as well as how they really want to make their students impact wherever they're coming from. The second thing was the diversity. I feel like some of my goals that I really want to change can only be done by getting ideas from different people. And me um, being like from Kenya, the way I said, having an opportunity to stretch my wings to the whole world will really enable me to get amazing ideas on how I can change things and make them work better. The second thing was also about the course I wanted to do in the health sector that was nursing. The facilities they offer, the, ex, uh, the feedback they give, you know, like feedback for me is like my morning breakfast. And for me to grow, I really need feedback on what I really want to do. And it seems like University of Hartford really, really gives a lot of that. And for me, I feel like that would really also help me grow. Second, starting away from home. When I was in, uh, in 2016, I earned uh, some extent program in the US and the exposure I got, I think really stirred up my mind. And the impact, and let me say the devotion I had towards my book then cannot be compared to the devotion I have my, on my books when I'm at home. Sometimes I really want to focus 100%, but because of the ongoing challenges, it is so hard to do that. And I feel like sometimes even like studying away from home, like let me say right now this moment, even when I'm going to school, I really focus on what I want to do and I can see myself achieving them like pretty fast. So when I weigh the two sides on my pivot, I feel like studying at University of Hartford is at eight, while studying at University of Nairobi is, let me say, at five. Yeah, so Hartford has it. Well, great. Um, we wish you all of the luck with your applications. 
Um, all right, well, I know I realize we've gone uh, a couple of minutes over time and we wanna be respectful of everyone's time here today. So um, I'll just say again, thank you all so much for joining. We really appreciate um, you taking an hour with us today. Um, and we are so grateful that you had the opportunity to hear from the girls and you know, from me, and I think I speak for everyone on the call. Thank you so much, ladies, for your time today. It was incredible to hear from you. Um, Amy, do you have anything to add before we sign off? No, just a thank you to, to every single one who took the time out of the day to join and hear from the girls. And of course, a big thank you to the girls themselves for sitting in this cold room. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all so much, everyone. Enjoy your afternoons, evenings, days, wherever you are in the world. Thank you. Bye, everyone.